It's page up, page down. Yeah? Okay. I believe the scientific consensus that anthropogenic climate change is now indisputable. James Hansen, the leading climate scientist previously from NASA, respected for many predictions that have proven to be true, recently issued a grim warning that we are nearing the point of no return when it comes to reversing or even mitigating the adverse effects of climate change. In other words, if we were to stop producing greenhouse gases now, the globe would continue to warm for hundreds of years, and the oceans would take perhaps a 1,000. Here are several alarming fa facts that provide evidence that global warming is upon us and happening even faster than predicted. 2015 was the warmest year on record, and this past decade was the warmest since 1880. In November of 2015, a one degree centigrade planetary rise in temperature was officially acknowledged, but widely believed to be conservative in terms of scientific terms. The halfway mark to the two degree centigrade target, or safe limit to avoid catastrophic global warming. And three, the Eastern Siberian Arctic shelf, methane, is being released one of the most threatening facts of all. We have exceeded the projected tipping point of 350 parts per million uh, of carbon dioxide and are now at 400 parts per million, heating up our land, air, ice, and oceans with the equivalence of 400,000 Hiroshima atomic bombs a day. Global ocean temperatures are now one degree centigrade higher than they were 140 years ago. The heated Arctic Ocean is causing the permafrost of the East Siberian Arctic Shelf to melt, releasing methane, a gas 20 to 30 times more potent than carbon dioxide as a heat-trapping gas into the atmosphere. There are such massive reserves of methane in the subarctic that if only a small percentage is released, it can lead to a jump in the average temperature of the Earth's atmosphere by up to 10 degrees centigrade. Recent observations in the Arctic show increased rates of methane escaping from the seabed now. These facts have produced a very plausible scientific scientific prediction of a catastrophic release, or bubble, of methane occurring abruptly or in coming decades. Such a release could have an exponentially amplifying effect on global warming, launching catastrophic scenarios more rapidly than we had anticipated. And we are now just getting news of the rapid melting of the sub-Antarctic shelf. Previously, the LAF declaration correctly predicted and responded to the environmental crisis of 1966 with a vision 50 years ago. The ecological planning initiatives and educational goals that were projected, I believe, have been accomplished. However, at this point, we confront a new drastic challenge. In 1966, these visionaries could not foresee globalization or the population explosion with corresponding fossil fuel use and consumption that have outstripped all of our profession's good intentions and achievements regarding sustainable development through responsible design. I no longer believe that the work we do as individual responsible practitioners will be able to effectively contribute to averting this long predicted crisis because we are entering a state of emergency. We do not have another 50 years, or perhaps even 15 years. I sadly conclude that our excellent professional practices will become irrelevant in the face of global warming, a problem whose magnitude we are now confronting. I do not advocate ceasing our professional excellence or carrying out our individual duties as responsible practitioners. But my message is today, we must go beyond landscape architecture practice in order to broach this critical environmental crossroad. 
The question before us all is, what can be done to keep this scenario from playing out? What can we do as a group of people whose ethos is to steward our natural environment since the impacts are coming much sooner than expected? My declaration is for a collective call to action. We must together advocate for funding the development and testing of a portfolio of geotechnologies to counteract man-made global warming until the required reductions in carbon dioxide emissions are reached and we have eventually transitioned to sustainable energy economies. As a first priority, we should develop techniques to cool the Arctic because the possibility of a major methane release triggered by melting Arctic ice constitutes a planetary emergency. There are technologies that have been proposed for rapidly cooling the Arctic on the necessary scale in the form of solar radiation management as one possible technology. But we should be investing in research and development towards this goal immediately. At the same time, we must focus upon measures that can reduce existing quant quantities of atmospheric carbon dioxide by carbon dioxide removal processes to lower the pollutant level and the warming effects. Finally, as cutting global greenhouse gas emissions must remain an urgent priority, reducing emissions from existing, new, and proposed carbon-powered stations, particularly coal plants, with carbon capture storage techniques must be rigor rigorously pursued. Scientists have conceived various methods, and new ones may be discovered to achieve these goals, so it is very likely to be technologically feasible. But much more research and testing is needed before deployment. I believe that science can help us out of this imminent and dire situation in order to buy us time so that the longer-term goal of zero carbon emissions can eventually be achieved. I therefore urge both the LAF and the ASLA to create a political wing with a forceful agenda to persuade our decision makers and politicians to support bold research to save our planet's atmosphere through technologies that can prevent Arctic methane release, plus sequester and capture carbon dioxide. We must exert pressure on our government to fund the equivalent of a Manhattan Project for climate change mitigation in response to a clear and present environmental danger we are now facing. The LAF should create a political agenda that will also be focused on having a social media voice. It is now clear through these modalities that political change can occur. Petitions and signatures impel those in power to exert the voice of the people. This is today's version of taking it to the streets. We must become online warriors. We are a well-educated, knowledgeable group of people who have the status to influence others. Together, we have the power to create awareness about this environmental emergency, and we have the power to make change. I further propose that we, as a group of dedicated landscape architects, immediately embark upon a hyper-aggressive climate campaign that I believe should be owned by the LAF. We need, together, give our support to other actionable groups like 350.org, Friends of the Earth, Greenpeace, and the Arctic News, amongst others who are working heroically and aggressively on climate change policy and action. Finally, the LAF has re represented the profession at its highest level and has always had climate change as part of its core agenda. We should encourage and assist the LAF to raise its voice, visibility, and create a plat platform of knowledge for educating our own profession and reach out to others about up-to-date research on climate change. The LAF should focus its members towards grassroots activism, which in turn can motivate our political leaders. The ASLA has a lobby in Washington, D.C., 
It is another group that really needs to collaborate with the LAF. Through our profession's lobbying arm, we can exercise a full amount of intellectual authority and political influence and strategically advance climate, climate rescue. In summary, I am suggesting we shift our priorities from individual practice to group political action so as to impel our government to, number one, forge an international effort to cool the Arctic, suppress methane, and aggressively remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, two, take immediate and extremely drastic action to entirely curb global carbon dioxide emissions, three, evolve rapidly towards completely renewable energy resources. I have hope that the world's best scientists will find ways to buy us the gift of time so that we can avert the swift intensification of climate change. Then we will be given a second chance to learn to live in balance with the Earth. But most importantly, we must act as individuals and to encourage our professional organizations, such as the LAF, the ASLA, and the LALI that I found out today, as well as IFLA, to come together and to work together. Now, I myself, I'm pledging my time and energy to the LAF to build a climate change platform that will promote political action. I would like to see an Obama-like, internet-led campaign to spread the word. If there is anybody out there who would like to help bring this agenda forward, please let me know, as I am but one person on a mission, but I need colleagues. Also, I do have a bibliography, if anybody's interested, of the resources that I've used for this declaration, would be happy to send it to you. Thank you.